Hi everybody, welcome back to Higher Ideas. It's been a while since my first official quote-unquote episode, and I'm actually working on a really cool little video that will be probably the next upload. But it's taking a while since it's a video, and it takes a lot more work than just recording something. And uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd put up another episode talking about Occupy this time. And that's a big topic, because uh, it's really hard to choose where to start on Occupy. I guess for me, the Occupy movement came onto my radar just about a week before they went live in, in uh, New York. And it was something probably like just some random internet post mentioning it, and somehow it caught my attention and it felt, you know, I got the tingles on my spidey sense saying this might be something big, so I kept an eye on it, and I bookmarked the website, and I was there when it started streaming. And I watched it pretty much obsessively for at least a week to a week and a half, constantly biting my nails, listening to everyone's stories, waiting to see what would happen with confrontations with the police, which would happen frequently. And uh, they really filmed it well. You really felt like you were part of the group. And uh, that was really effective because as I listened to the stories of these people and as I saw what was happening to them, how they were reacting to it, and the unfairness that was being plainly displayed, not to mention the fact that they weren't being covered on the news, uh, it revealed a lot to me. But one of the first things it did was make me reevaluate my vision of what an activist was. See, I wouldn't really consider myself an activist, especially not at that point. I was just a guy living a regular life, and I knew about activists, I knew about protesters and protests, but none had ever come along that seemed to have anything to do with me. Uh, it was sort of uh, noise on the news, and I didn't know anyone that was an activist. It was very sort of uh, disconnected. So watching the Occupy movement bloom on live online TV, as it would be, really sort of forced me to reevaluate what an activist is. And so I had to ponder the word activist and uh, re-examine its definition. Because the definition most people have of an activist is sort of a troublemaker, because it's been painted that way by media. Sort of a troublemaker, someone who wants a free ride, someone who just wants to do drugs, a lazy person, a person who's been kicked out of society already, a deadbeat, a loser, that's why they're protesting, because they've got nothing left to lose. You know, that kind of negative image just keeps pounding away. You keep getting this sort of representation of them on the media ever since I was a kid. But this was showing me that, hey, these activists are just people. They're students, they're mothers, they're nurses, they're teachers, they're sometimes politicians even. These were just people coming together saying, we've got to act. And that's an activist. An activist, really, activist is the opposite of pacifist. And isn't pacifist the one that's letting themselves get walked all over? Aren't they the weak ones, if you compare the two? What, what's stronger, a person who sits back and lets bad things happen, or a person who gets up and says, hey, stop doing that? The stronger one is the activist, the one who took action. That's the kind of person that changes history. That's the kind of person that makes things move forward. Our entire society owes it to activists. An activist doesn't necessarily have to be a person protesting a government. An activist is just a person that gets up and makes things happen. And that's what these guys were doing. And that made me question what I was doing. What am I doing? Am I a pacifist? No. Many times in my life, in my own little world, I've always been a person who wants to get up and fix problems. I don't just sit back and let them rot things away. I, I can't stand that. I have to get up. So I realized I'm an activist. I'm an activist who's been asleep or without a cause or, I don't know, just without the right people around me to bring it, bring it out of me. Who knows? But what's important is watching it woke me up. And I'm sure it did that to a lot of other people. And right there, only right there, the Occupy movement already succeeded. People say, what have they accomplished? The world hasn't changed. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. My world changed because of Occupy. And even if that's the only thing that happens, then guess what? It changed the world. Because I'm in the world. I'm part of the world. And I'm trying to do my best to do justice to that gift. But I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure so many people have been changed by watching it or participating in it. 
or just seeing how they were treated and maybe changing their views on good guys and bad guys. So, after watching that, I became very hopeful that someone would start an Occupy in my town, and sure enough, they did. And I was there right away. I was there at the first meeting before we occupied. There were two meetings that took place, public meetings in parks, to discuss how things would go, to uh, sort of train people, and uh, just a pr preliminary meetings, and I was at both. I was ready to go. I was going to take part. And those first couple meetings were very, um, would turn out to be foreshadowing of how the entire occupation would go. So that would be the first lesson, I suppose. Be mindful of problems in your first meeting, because those will be the problems, both procedural and person-wise. If there are problem people, those people will continue to be problem people if they aren't addressed immediately. And we had those. We had a couple of problem people that were speaking out of turn during meetings, that were being disruptive, that were being aggressive, that were just plain spewing nonsense, and it seemed like they were there only to derail the process, and probably they were, to be honest. Because they kept reappearing, even when police would take them away, even when uh, they would be publicly ran out of the space. The next day they'd just come back and everything would be fine. No one would say, hey, what are you still doing here? You know? And uh, that was a significant weakness in the Occupy of uh, my town. So that's another lesson right there. If someone's being a problem, call them on it. And if they keep being a problem, just publicly shame them. Don't come back here. You can't force someone not to be in a public space, but you can make them damn uncomfortable if they keep causing problems. You could say, hey, there's that guy that keeps stealing stuff. Or hey, there's that guy that keeps touching women. Hey, there's that guy that stole my money. You know? Stuff like that. You, you've got to make sure those people don't make a, a home in your occupation. I don't know if this is still relevant because to be honest you don't hear much about actual Occupy sites lately. It's become more of a diffuse movement. But I'm throwing this out there just in case anyone who is currently about to start another Occupy uh, camp or still trying to run one, um, maybe this will help. The first week after we actually occupied was going pretty well actually. The first weekend was amazing. The energy was amazing. There were so many people that showed up at the camp, so many people ready to speak. There, were, there was a truck with speakers and an open mic. People were taking turns, getting in line, and just talking as long as they wanted to, just having their voice heard. And that was exciting. And there was all sorts of groups, different groups, different groups with signs representing themselves, different people saying different things in different corners. I remember walking by, and uh, there was people holding up a Ron Paul sign, and uh, some people were dogging them. They were coming up and arguing, like, hey, why, why are you here supporting Ron Paul? That guy sucks. And instead of fighting, they were actually debating. It was amazing. They were debating civilly. It was a little heated, but both sides were making good points, and both sides were giving each other, you know, turns to speak. And if they couldn't uh, find a common ground, then they just, one would walk away, and that would be it, you know? There were no threats. There was no violence. It was amazing to see that strangers could still get along when they come together in a spirit of, of doing good for everyone. So it started off on a very good foot, but those problems that were there from the beginning you know, lingered on, while the initial rush of uh, exuberance and, and fresh people sort of trickled away slowly, waiting to see what, what would happen next. Uh, those people stayed, and problems would sort of spurt up here and there around them. But at least for a while, it seemed like we would be able to keep going with those people in place. We'd just sort of ignore them, be like, oh, you know, let that guy speak. But uh, I was very mindful to try and speak up about the process and making sure we stick to order, or else we wouldn't get anything done. I didn't speak that often, but when I did, people seemed to listen. And that's where I personally learned a very important lesson, which is I have a certain capacity to move people when I speak. I'm trying to do it here, but I have to be honest, doing it in front of a computer is not anywhere near what I could do in front of a crowd. And I really wish I could just speak on a stage in front of a crowd right now. I'd be so much more comfortable, believe it or not. I'm very different in this room with this microphone by myself, pacing around the room. It's a much different energy than what I had on that camp. And it was amazing. I amazed myself. 
I'm not trying to speak egotistically. I'm just being honest. I amazed myself daily when I would speak up and I would see the reactions in people and I would feel like I was putting out situations that would have become much worse. So I was really proud of myself. I was keeping the thing on track and that was to be my goal for much of the occupation in my town would be to make sure to keep things on a good track and keep corruption from springing up or spreading 